reading is from 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 20. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual space. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you who called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and he lay down. Again the Lord said, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to go to see Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not have yet know of the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up the next Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. If he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to go do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. And that time I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemed God, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or by offering. Samuel lay down until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision. But Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son, Samuel answered, Here I am. What was it he said to you? Eli asked. Do not hide from me. May God deal with you. Be it ever so severely if you hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beershebub, recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. Our New Testament reading is from John chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to leave the Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethesda. Philip found Nathaniel and told him, We have found the one who Moses wrote about in the law, about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathaniel asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite, in whom there is no deceit. How do you know? Nathaniel asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then the man of the fire declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe, because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Kenneth Chapman related, related that as a professor of religion, he had his student prepare sermons from either 1st or 2nd Samuel, 3, 1, 10, 20, our scripture today, which describes Samuel calling to ministry. 
His reason that these young people respond to this passage so overwhelm, overwhelmingly that, well, they could identify with Samuel and his searching. Those students had not stood before a burning bush like Moses, nor did they have a vision in the temple of God, as did the prophet Isaiah. But most were young children and teens when they heard the voice of God calling their name. They had also had their own Eli, the wise friend who helped them to understand the voice of God. Clergy ranks need people, young and old, to set, well, step forward when they hear God calling them to professional ministry. God does not call all people to be pastors or missionaries, but God does call us by name to fill minister roles, such as Sunday school teachers, ushers, visitation volunteers, choir directors, and a hundred other roles of service. The church needs both men and women who, like Samuel, will say those three most important words. Here I am. Gerald Reed wrote, I've often haunted by the title that Professor Neil Postman book, Amazing Ourself to Death. He argued that the special symbol of modern America is Las Vegas, Nevada, a city humming with frantic people, constantly aglow with the glare of neon signs devoted to letting the good times roll. Reed believes that people are literally committing suicide with addiction, amusement, and diversity, which numbs the soul and distracts us from our eternal concerns. We cannot hear God's voice for the noise surrounding our lives. Boy, is that true. If we are not to hear God's voice, we need to quiet ourselves from the outside distractions and simply listen. Listen. Samuel listened to God's voice. Samuel heard God speak in the silence of the night. I remember that popular tune back in the 60s, Silence is Golden. You may remember it. How true of, but how rare in our age. My plea for this generation is to take time to be silent before God, to listen to what God is saying, to step back from the noise and concentrate on that still, small voice that still whispers in any ear that is listening. It is one thing to listen. It's another to be actively available. Each time God spoke to Samuel, name, he thought it was Eli, and without hesitation went to Eli and said, here I am. And Samuel said, through his action, Eli, I don't care how often you persist. I am available. I'm here for you. How available are you for God's use? How available are you for others? Available, uh, availability includes affirming, forgiving, helping, listening, caring, 
giving, impacting lives. You get the picture? Ted Egon tells of a that about rummaging through his desk drawer at home and discovered a flashlight that he had used a year ago. He wasn't surprised when he flicked the switch and discovered it didn't work. He unscrewed it and attempted to remove the batteries, but to no avail. He gave a last ditch you know, effort and tugged, and they came loose. They came loose, but the mass of horror. He wrote, battery acid had corroded the entire inside of the flashlight. The batteries were new when I put them in, and I stored them in a safe, warm place. But that was the problem, you see. Those batteries were meant to be, not to be in a warm, comfortable place. They were designed to be turned on, to be used. So God called Samuel to be used. Samuel, at his young age, understood the call. Do you at your age? God is calling your name. Your positive response should be, here I am. Your servant is listening. So true. So true. Well, the good news came up to a mother who just got off the phone and quickly picked it up again. She started phoning all her friends. Her and her husband had been waiting for years to adopt a child. They had just received a phone call that there was a baby girl waiting for them. Their phone, the, lady, the mother was on the phone, never hung up very long. One call at the other. She had been sharing the good news with everybody she knew. Well, you know, Philip, in today's scripture of John, must have felt much like that mother did that night. At last, long-awaited event had occurred. For generations, people had been saying that the Messiah would come soon. And now, he finally has. Finally had, not only that he had sought out Philip and made himself known, who would have guessed this simple man from Nazareth of all places would be the one, would be the one. Philip had had to tell somebody, so he quickly found Nathanael and burst out the good news. We have found him, the one Moses and the prophets wrote about. It's Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Well, Nathaniel's reaction was, well, to say the least, not too real peppy or excitement. Nathaniel, wow, he said, from Nazareth? You're kidding. You're kidding, right? Nothing good had, could possibly come out of there. Even that lack of response could not diminish Philip's excitement. If you don't believe me, come and see for yourself. Oh, Nathaniel must have been curious enough about this man. Oh, he had his friend all worked up. So he trudged up the road behind Philip, following him to a stranger. Nathaniel must, have, must not have known Jesus. 
but Jesus certainly knew him. Here is truly an Israelite whom there is no deceit. Nathaniel stopped in his track, mouth hanging open at a moment before. There, where did you know me? How did you know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. That was all it took. Nathaniel's doubt and criticism fell away. He recognized the one who stood before him, the rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus promised that Nathaniel would see great things in the days to come. The Bible does not tell us much more about Nathaniel. Nathaniel's story, he is not mentioned again until the last chapter of John's Gospel. There we see that he is indeed, as Jesus promised, seeing great things. After Jesus' resurrection, Nathaniel went fishing with several friends. They had caught nothing, but continued to fish all night. They probably were not sure what else to do with their lives. Then, just as the sun came up, they heard a call from the beach telling them to put their net on the other side. They did, and fish came pouring in as they struggled to pull in their net. Nathaniel watched in amazement that Peter jumped off the boat and swam towards the shore, toward Jesus. There could be no greater sight. Here was the one who had been crucified, burned, buried, appearing before the disciples. Wow. The one that he loved. Last to have your meal with the one you love, Jesus. Nathaniel and the other quickly rowed ashore. Nathaniel must have remembered as he ate breakfast with the risen Lord that day so long ago when he scoffed at the idea that anything good could come out of Nazareth. The great thing of Christ did not end with his resurrection or with the events of witnesses, witness by the apostles. It didn't end there. No. They continue. If we put our faith in the one from Nazareth who sees and knows us all and who says to each of us, come and see. May God grant us a willing heart of Philip and a wondering eye of Nathaniel as we seek to follow Christ and in our hearts to be able to say when we are called, here I am. Your servant is listening. Are we ready to listen and to act for our sake. Amen. Our hymn today.